Oh boy, 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 this is good. Remember yesterday, I spent all day answering email. Well, I found this gem and I gotta read it to you, which is uh, produ producing this video. <laughs> Storage auction larceny, how vets make money off news. I, 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 I gotta give you credit for sending me, of all people, this email. This is gonna blow your mind, it blew mine. Let's see, let me get in there. All right, <laughs> it starts off, don't laugh, but too late. Please don't use my name. I know you're gonna make a video about this, you damn skippy. I wrote to you about eight months ago and I told you that I was gonna make loads of money in this business. That's pretty much the first mistake, you know, when you don't know what you're doing. Just wanted a few tips and pointers and I never heard back from you, so I said, screw you and your book. I even stopped watching your videos. This could not be that hard. You figured it out. I am a college graduate and you are not. An assumption has proved to be very costly for my family. I spent $900 on the unit and it was well worth it. I sold a few things and made my money back in a profit. At the auction, there was a vet who told me he wanted this old wooden chest that was in the front of the unit and asked me how much I wanted for it. He was going to give it to his mother. <laughs> I said $500, you know, I just threw a number out there, you know, and he, to my surprise, pulled out the money and paid me on the spot. Don't, don't, don't. In a few weeks time, I had made a nice profit and almost $2,000 on the unit. I was happy and I used the money to buy more units. Things were going quite well. A month later, I learned the vet had sold the chest he had bought for me at auction for $12,000. One of my nemesis on the auction trail could not wait to tell me. My heart sunk. I literally gave away the best item in the unit. After that, and getting over a mild depression, I started watching your videos again and bought all three of your books. Just wanted to tell you how a hater has become a fan. I wish I had pushed through my own arrogance and listened to you. Uh, in the book and the videos, there was information that you should never, ever sell something you don't know the value to someone at the auction. Could have saved me literally $12,000. Keep up the, the work and uh, yeah, I'll be watching because I know this will turn into a video. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, am I crying? Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, first of all, I salute you for having the courage to even tell that story. Oh my God. I have messed up and made some boo-boos, but wow, that, that was huge. Um, when you're out there on the storage auction trail and you don't know the value of your item, if some, you, know, you, you don't sell this stuff to people out there. I've said it a million times. I'm going to say it again today. If you buy a unit at an auction and someone makes you an offer but you don't know the value of that item and you can't look it up on your cell phone really quickly or get a rough estimate, chances are, <laughs> hold on, just go ahead and grab a chair or some and brace yourself because you're about to get it. <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> Oh my god oh my god uh, seriously okay I'm gonna calm down cuz you know uh, thanks for sending that I appreciate the props and uh, the business and I won't use your real name um, <laughs> it's a very unique name too that's the funny thing but seriously if you're getting in this business it's just like you don't sell your stuff if you don't know that you just don't do it and also, another part of that would be if you have an item on eBay and you are not 100% certain of the, of the value and someone comes in, shoot, with an offer, like instantly, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, chances are you need to do, do some more, you know, investigation. You know, you need to dig a little bit deeper. You need to really ascertain if you have something nice because, uh, mm, wow. That, that had to hurt. 
You know, John Madden, that's got to hurt, boy. Woo! I mean, that's not just salt. That's like the whole salt barrel and some salt mines in your wounds. Because I was like, wow. There, there was a little bit more in there, a little bit more personal. I'm like, I didn't, I wasn't going to read that. But, um, <laughs> wow. Okay, all right. Understand that in this business, a lot of the vets are vets for a reason. If a vet comes over and befriends you, they see potential. It happened to me. After I started buying, making money, actually walked with a little swagger, they become your buddies. Because, you know, it's not like they like you. They want to ascertain where you sell. Because where you sell is a good indicator of how much you can get for stuff. If you sell the flea market, you're not going to get as much as a store owner. It's not going to happen. If you sell online or, you know, and really, even in 2012, there's still only a few people selling at the flea market in their own store online in Craigslist and have a website. There's only a select few people who are actually doing those five things in 2012, believe it or not. Because what happens is people find something that works for them, they like it, they become comfortable, and bam, they are in there to win it, and they do not develop the other sales channels. They just don't do it. So the, the vet will befriend you, and they'll chat you up. They may even take you to lunch, and it's not because they like you. It's because they're afraid of you. <laughs> they're afraid of what you may do to them. They're afraid of what you may do to their business because you're real competition. Because when it, you know, at some point you may become friends. That happened with some of the people, but initially they want to know what is this mofo about because he's buying too many damn units. What is he doing? How is he liquidating that stuff so quickly? So when the vets start paying you attention, no. You have come on this spotty sense, not the friend sense, but the spotty sense. And this is how you handle it. You be their friend. But as they ask you questions, you jump all, you just shoo, jump all up in their business. Where do you sell? What's your pricing strat? I mean, you just, you elevate that conversation. You know what you do when you elevate that conversation? You're going to scare them even more. <laughs> They're going to be terrified. They're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's talking about stuff I've never even heard about. Then you can make money off of them. Because I'll tell you how some of the people who used to kick my ass at auction later became friends. Because it's like, you know, I remember the day. We were up in Alpharetta and one of the properties was canceled. So there was this long delay. The district manager decided to take lunch. So we all pretty much just ended at the same place having lunch. People become very sociable over food. We just start talking and everything. And I was just like, yeah, I just sold this such and such on eBay last night. And then one of the people was like, hmm. Hey, you know, I got some stuff that might do well on eBay. But, you know, just that and that time to put it up there, right? And I'm looking at this fool. He couldn't even type internet, you know? Even with it spelled out in front. He just couldn't even type it. And I was like, uh-huh. So we exchanged numbers and we talked it. A few days later, I was at his warehouse and he didn't have a few things for eBay. He had about 400 items for eBay that I put into my system, sold under my ID, and made about seven grand off of him. All that happened because of a conversation. You see, understand this game is very deep. Everyone doesn't have the same skill set, the same abilities, nor the same mindset. And I had a totally different mindset because this guy was. He's probably like 60-something now, but he was in his late 50s back then. And he was not internet savvy whatsoever. His wife answered his email from his kids. He, he didn't know how to mess with that stuff. He sold strictly through his connections that he had developed over the years and the flea market. That's just two places he sold, and he was doing remarkably well with those two selling channels. Then I turned him on some other stuff, and then he's like, hey, you know, Glenn selling stuff for me then. Psh, another one, psh, then another one. So also this created goodwill on the auction trail because since I was making them money, it behooved them to help me make money, which means if it was just us, I got pretty much any damn unit I want at a, as they say in the hood, for the low low. Let me say that again, for the low low. Because 
was big against me because it was like, if I piss him off, he's gonna stop selling. And the thing is, I was putting cash money in every one of them's hand every week. Every week, and I'm not talking about two hundred dollars. I'm talking about a G or two every week. And that was another secret to my success. You know, what's that old saying? Keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. Because if you keep them close enough, you can be a little money in your pocket. All right, so that's the deal. You know, be real careful out there. Don't be selling your good stuff cheap, or as they say in the hood, for the low low. $12,000. I would have to slap myself. Boy. And for tips like this and more tips, you know, I'm getting ready to make something really nice, really sexy, because what we're going to do is training. Because the thing is that's missing in the space is reseller training. Because, you know, yeah, anyone can buy low and sell high, but in today's climate, it's very, very competitive. And that's just only going to get you so far. You really need to have a system. Going to have that in play. All right, so hopefully, you know, you derive some benefit from this or a little comedy because I've been laughing my ass off here. I've read that email like six times and every time I just giggle my ass silly. But uh, once again, thanks for sending that. I won't say your name. Thanks for the business and check out some more videos because uh, there's a lot you can learn here, seriously. You know, if you get past me telling you you're a dumbass for making mistakes. But, hey, I'm your drill sergeant. You know, that's what I do. All right, this is Glendon. We're making money with storage unit auctions.